Earth is the blue planet, the water planet. On Earth, water is the key to all life. Oceans cover 71% of our planet's surface. Populations rely on them as a vital source of high-protein food. 90% of our goods are transported at sea. And the oceans hold a tremendous supply of critical resources. Through currents and heat transfer, oceans dictate what parts of our land, even deep within the interior of a continent, are fertile, desert, hot, or cold. It is the ocean's warm surface that feeds energy to weather disasters such as hurricanes and typhoons. In addition, microscopic oceanic plants consume some 50 gigatons of carbon per year, about the same as all the plants and trees on land. We depend on the oceans more now than at any time in history, yet it is this majority of our planet that we know the least about. In general, oceanographers study the physics, the chemistry, and the biology of the sea with the goal of trying to understand how the ocean works and also how the ocean is changing. And I'm a biogeochemical oceanographer, so I'm interested in understanding the chemistry of the ocean, so particularly how the climate, our climate affects the chemistry of the ocean, and how in turn the chemistry of the ocean affects our climate. So broadly, my research is focused on understanding the relationships between biogeochemical fluxes, so for example, carbon and nutrients, and productivity in the ocean, which has significant implications for climate. I do a lot of work in the Southern Ocean, which is the most important oceanic region for climate because it stores more heat and more carbon dioxide than anywhere else. It's also the region where the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans meet and is highly sensitive to global warming. So a major motivation for my research is to develop expectations for how the chemistry and biology of this important region might change in the future. Well, there's a connection of my research to climate and climate change. Basically, it's imperative that we understand how our oceans function now and how they're changing if we're going to develop and implement good policies to protect them, while at the same time still being able to use them for resources such as food. I currently supervise 10 postgraduate students, all of whom are working on research projects that involve intense field work, so they've all spent time at sea. Um, the SA Gullis II is an incredible resource for us. She's absolutely state-of-the-art, equipped with state-of-the-art instrumentation, and she can go into oceanic regions that most other research vessels can't. So for example, uh, the sea ice zone of the Southern Ocean in winter. The ocean, and especially the sea ice, I mean, both together, they are a key component of the Earth climate system. Um, particularly the, the sea ice and the ocean are actually impacted by climate change, and they may also amplify those changes. Sea ice helps a lot to mediate the amount of energy coming from the sun. So it acts as uh, some sort of layer that covers the ocean, and then uh, it shelters the ocean from the sun rays. So without sea ice, there would be less radiation or less sunlight that's reflected back out, and that would make our global temperatures rise. And with sea ice, you have that regulation of us keeping our temperatures lower than it would be without sea ice. South Africa is very close to Antarctica, so it is in the interest of the country to know, to have a more, more advanced research on the ice. Any change in the Antarctic climate actually affects South Africa as well. When sea ice grows, there's heat that's lost and gained from the atmosphere and the ocean. And that makes sea ice very sensitive to changes in the atmosphere and the ocean. So sea ice would be an excellent early indicator of climate change. There are two streams to the research I do. One is a very physical science working stream where I look at atmospheric chemistry and biogeochemical cycling, trying to understand how pollution is impacting the surface ocean. And I think there's such a paucity of measurements in the remote atmosphere, especially in the southern hemisphere, especially in marine systems, 
that the work I've done understanding that it's not just about atmospheric deposition to the ocean, but the ocean is actually a significant player and there's interaction between the surface ocean and the lower atmosphere is something that's really kind of a new paradigm and I think that's a big contribution to the scientific community. And so finding interesting questions at the edges of disciplines I think is a place that's really ripe for research right now and increasingly with interdisciplinary training that scientists are getting we can answer those questions you really should be an earth system scientist and I'm striving to be that and to train my students to be that. By plotting shifts in currents and heat transfer, we can better protect coastal populations and industries from ocean-based disasters. By tracking the creation of weather patterns such as El Nino, we can prepare agricultural regions for flooding and drought and world populations for harsh winters and heat waves. Similar to cyclones in the atmosphere, it is in the ocean or circular current of water that can range up to hundreds of kilometers in diameter. They play an important role in the climate and ecosystem as they transport heat and nutrients from one region to the other. In the southern Mozambique channel, it is or either formed in the northern part of the channel and moves southwards or they can be formed at the southern tip of Madagascar as you can observe here in this animation. An anticyclonic eddy was formed at latitude 24 degrees south and 43 degrees east. As it moved to the west, the region southwest of Madagascar also experienced an extreme temperature event which we call a marine heat wave, and this can be devastating for the marine ecosystem. Ocean circulation is changing as a result of climate change. South Africa is a very natural laboratory. The important thing about this region is that we have very warm salty water that moves from the Indian Ocean into the Atlantic. And one of the areas of my research is to try and estimate how much of that water is pushing around the, the Cape of Good Hope. We've got a lot of moorings that extend westwards from Cape Town towards South America. They are measuring temperature and, and the salt content, so the salinity of the ocean environment, on a minute by minute basis. So what we're trying to gather from all this information is how the oceans are changing. And we start putting pieces together in the puzzle as to if the ocean circulation is changing in its intensity, how that will affect not only the region around South Africa, but the long-term changes. And the way I can explain that is that all oceans are connected. My name is Mohawa Ragosha and I am a physical oceanographer and a numerical modeler. With respect to the oceans being connected, my research focuses on the coastal connectivity between the warm Kagala's current and the co productive Benguela current. This is of importance because small pelagic fish spawn on the Agala's bank and their eggs and larvae have to travel to the Benguela where there is food. My research aims to study the role of the currents on this transport of eggs and larvae. At the heart of the Oceanography Department sits a vibrant beehive of students. The Oceanography Postgraduate Committee is responsible for departmental cohesions and activities such as beach cleanups, get-togethers and student presentations amongst many more. In 2020, five students organized the first Ocean Meet Sky Symposium, an initiative for students by students providing them with an excellent opportunity to showcase their research. 
One of the most prestigious fellowships are also offered in this department, further advancing black women in oceanography. Seamester is South Africa's first class afloat, which was an initiative started by Professor Isabel Lanzorg. The aim of Seamester is to select university students from all over South Africa and set sail for 10 days aboard the SA Gullis II. The students then take part in a rigorous scientific program involving multidisciplinary lectures coupled with practical work on deck. And in conjunction with this program, we have a dedicated science team interacting with the students on board. <laughs> 